Okay, here's a quick testimony. I was actually praying this morning and thought of the thought of this experience I had years ago. And I'm in kind of a similar place in regards to my my uh, attack of the enemy, I guess, or my fervency for the Lord. Um, but anyway, the, the story goes as this: I go, I go to my buddy's house. His name is Topher, and he had uh, his father I collected these animals and so he had these two wolves that were I think he had three no it was two, two wolves and now uh, they had these long cages maybe you know seven feet tall and probably about 20 feet at least long and about you know seven eight feet wide so there's long rectangles basically and there are two of them one side by side where they kept these different wolves they were like 90 percent wolves beautiful animals and um i was testing kind of the lord's like promises that we we are in control of creation that he's put us in charge of creation now i, I look back i was at that point in ways i was i was crazy like crazy in a different way, crazy and mature, but, but faithful. In that sense, it was good because God protected me. So one day, I don't know what, what I was doing. I can't remember, actually. There was not anybody there, really. Um, anyway, so I was, I was in the, I think I was looking for Topher, and um, went to his house. He wasn't there, so I went around back, and, and uh, I entered into this, this cage with this wolf, and uh, he was, there was a, uh, Oh, you know what? I and I knew the wolves were there. That's right. And I I brought food. <laughs> so he had this bowl there, and I put the food in the bowl. And and um, <clears throat> these these animals were not domesticated. Later, I found this out. Really, that the uh, you know the owner, the father, came home and he's like, "What are you doing?" Because I was in this cage with these this wolves like that. You're insane. Like get out of there. Like these are wild wolves kind of thing. <clears throat> I'll have to ask my Chris, uh, my friend Chris about this actually because he's a wildlife expert on and on wolves and other animals but so the um, the spiritual connotation though so that, that wasn't the end of it so I put the food down and then I was just praying to God and um, and I'm like you know I'm going to take this food back as you know as kind of a test again this is the dominant this is you know who I am in Christ as the as the overseer of the animals in Genesis one, you know, there's this it's clear that God has done that and He's restored us into that in ways. And I don't want to get a debate. All all I really wanted to emphasize was was what happened next and the spiritual connotation of that as I meditated on it this morning. So I went down to pick up the food, and this wolf just turns on me like like crazy, like it's just and you know. I don't really even have time to react in the sense of like fear, but I just put my arm, my forearm, and I came at the, the the wolf and put my forearm in his mouth. So he's now, you know, got his mouth around my forearm, and I must have had I must have had a shirt on <coughs> because he didn't I didn't get scratched or anything like that. But so the wolf doesn't clamp; he like balks and takes a step back. Now, the spiritual connotation I got from the Lord this morning was the, the call in our lives to attack the enemy. The enemy has his food. He feeds, I'm talking about Satan and his minions, he feeds on people. He feeds on the pain and the fear and the anxiety and the selfishness and the pride and the bitterness and anger and resentment and in people. And, and he actually promotes it, but then he feeds on it as well. And so, as Christians were called, Jesus clearly called us to rebuke the demons, to basically cast out demons from amongst people, from out of them, from over them in terms of oppression, and away from them. But Satan hates that, because he, he's found root. He roots himself, and his, you know, his minions, the fallen angels, have rooted themselves over and in people. And so when we, as, as kingdom bringers, go into people's lives and we start to um, call out these demons by name, uh, it's like we're taking their food away and they turn on us. And um, 
what's great is that they have no power over us because we are in Christ. It's not like we're alone. We have the king of the universe that has defeated Satan. And so, but, but what happens is when that attack initially comes at us, we feel it, we know it, we, we kind of sense the, the demonic, the darkness, the evil. We can flee. We can run. And uh, I've seen that a lot in the church, where this is fear mentality of, oh, we're, we're under the onslaught of the enemy. We've, we've been, you know, doing good things for God, and now he's coming at us. And it's like, I, I believe the shift, there needs to be a shift. Satan can't touch us as Christians. He can attack us, but it only fuels in Christ more vehement attack back at him. And then he's put in his place under our feet where we crush his head. And so my, my encouragement to you is rise up. Stop, stop believing that Satan has all this power. He has no power. Christ has all the power. Christ lives in you. And so as he turns on you, as you, as you are loving your neighbor and attacking the, the darkness and the oppression and the lies that hold your friends and your family and strangers around you in, in bondage, as he turns on you, laugh in his face step on his head and focus on Christ and what he wants to do in the lives of these people around you even in your own life is stop placating him and allowing him any power